Hi everyone, my name is Wana and this is Culture Diaries. Now today on the show my guest is an author, a poet, she's also the founder of one of the biggest festivals on this continent, the Ake Arts and Book Festival. Her name is of course Lola Shune. Hello. Welcome. Very nice to be here. Very, very you nice. You are always so busy. I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was possible to catch you. Uh, anything is possible oh. with you and oh. for you, Wana. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Ake Festival, let's, I mean, it's, we're going into the fifth year. We are. Did, did you expect this amount of success with it? Well, I'm going to be slightly modest and mm. say yes. Okay. And, but it's for two reasons. Um, the first reason being that there was a, a hunger for it. I could see that there was a space for a festival of that capacity um, with that sort of range when it comes to authors, you know, generations and different genres within the arts. Um, and the second thing is that I think um, when I start something, I, 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 I mean, before actually starting, I'd done a lot of research and I had a very clear picture of where we were going with it. And with a fantastic team and lots of hard work, um, I think it's, it didn't come as a surprise that. <laughs> but that how long been had, had you been planning it for, though? Um, it's been on my mind for years, uh, probably ten years before. I mean, I when I came back to Nigeria in two thousand and one, and I moved to Ibadan, I started the Ibadan Arts Renaissance, um, which I ran for the time for the length of time that I actually lived in Ibadan at the time. Um, when I moved to Abuja in two thousand and nine, myself and Dapo. Um, Oyewole started in fusion and then he got a job working with a minister so it was kind of fell on my lap and I was the one who was running it and we ran that for nearly three years so everywhere that I've lived I've always tried to um, establish something that creates cultural cultural awareness but also um, that celebrates creativity especially writing so I mean saying that is really interesting to me because I almost feel like Ake was all, a long way in the making. So all these little events in, were sort of beginnings of what Ake Festival could be. Yes. Um, because uh, there are a lot of people that are probably watching and thinking they have ideas for these grand things and they just don't know where to start. So for me, it's fascinating that there are little things that started that sort of developed into this much bigger idea. Would you sort of agree with I that? I would totally agree. Um, I am one of those people. I, I really believe that everything that you do in life you're working towards something. A lot of the time you don't know exactly what it is, but the little things that you do, especially when you're a creative person, especially when you're an organizer, um, all somehow along the line, all the different skills that you're picking up, and I've been very big on trying to really explore the things that I love, you'll find that it's all going somewhere and you're on a journey. Um, so it's easy to say, for instance, that okay, is Ake Festival my destination? Who knows? Maybe there's still something bigger that's going to, um, you know, fall into my hands, something that I'm going to, you know, have to engage with. Ake has also become a sort of pilgrimage for, for people now. So people are saving up, you know, students in school are saving up for the year to attend Ake mm. every November. People from around the world are like, oh, are you going to Ake this year? And people feel jealous when they don't get to go. And I think something that was quite fascinating for me, especially like the, attending this, the last edition, was the fact that I saw students, you know, rushing for books the way, you know, people would rush for anything else. I mean, and what does that, how did that feel for you, one? And two, what does it say about this idea of the literary culture that we don't read, we're not interested in books? Because just seeing young, young people and students like, you know, it's, this is not pop culture. You know, they're not running for a concert. They're running to buy books. Literally, people are racing before the books finish. Mm. First of all, we, I feel very, very lucky to have been part of something that um, celebrates and promotes literature and the arts. Um, and it is delightful when you look at uh, a cross-section of, of the guests, of the visitors, and you look at the demographics. 
um, and the fact that it's kind of got younger every year. So now we have a lot of people in their 20s who make their way to Abeokuta from northern Nigeria, from the south-south, from Potakot, from Bayelsa, from Enugu, from all over the country. And um, a lot of them do indeed, as you've said. They will save up money every month that they're coming to spend at Ake Festival to spend on buying books. And I think one of the great things about buying books at Ake Festival is that a lot of the time the authors are there and the authors can sign the books. Um, I think you can, we, a lot of the time we can afford, especially when it comes to luxury items, and not, let's not pretend that, unfortunately, books um, uh, um, are a, 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 a books are an, a, a luxury item. Um, reading itself, I think some people will say is pretty elitist, uh, uh, the fact that you're engaging with books at all. Um, but um, the truth is, if you want something um, enough, you will work towards it to make it happen. And that's why people save money and that's why people um, come and storm the bookstore. We also make a big deal of advertising the books that yeah. we actually are going to have and talking about them. Um, it's fascinating to hold a book in your hand and to actually have the author, you to be, sit there listening to the author, the person who wrote the book, and to be able to ask questions about the book. I think that's also important for people, to be able to actually engage with creative people. There's that thing they say that you know young people don't read, young people do not engage um, intellectually, and I think I almost feel like uh, Aki kind of turns that upside the head. And how, how does that make you feel when you see that? And people are, they're deconstructing, you know, in, in random gist over lunch, they're deconstructing somebody's work or a conversation they had about, certain, about ideas in itself and how ideas become actually quite important things. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating and just wonderful. Um, I, see, I see and I listen to people having those, those conversations um, at Ake Festival. And I, it really warms my heart. It's what we want. The whole idea was to create a cultural hub, to create a safe space where people can discuss their ideas, can talk about books confidently, know that they're being listened to. But the other great thing, of course, is the networking. You know, a lot of the time, Matake, you'll suddenly hear, and then you'll see people hugging. And it's because they've had an e-relationship kind of over Facebook or on Twitter, talking about books, and then suddenly they're actually face-to-face -face meeting at Ake Festival. And uh, that's, the, there's, you can't really, I don't know. It, it's something I, I would pay a lot of money to observe if I wasn't involved in the organization myself. It's a beautiful thing. In a country that does not place so much importance on or almost no value on its cultural capital. Do you ever feel like you're fighting a tide? Because there could be more support you could get. Yeah, there's definitely more support that could come my way. But one of the things that I have um, observed over the years is that sometimes it's actually better to for government to be your last resort. Um, we get a lot of support from, from the Ogun State Government in terms of providing the space. And we tell them way ahead of time that these are our dates. And like last year, as you would have observed, we, there were no clashing, no, no other events mm. taking place within the complex, which is very kind. I, I feel it's, it's one of those, it's that, that thing that people say, if you build it, they will come. Mm. Yeah? And I really feel that that's, that's how it is even with culture. Um, we're constantly fighting a whole lot of, of battles. I mean, there are people, for instance, where, I mean, you and I know that there are parts of this country where reading, where books is haram, where people believe that there's something that's, you know, not quite right about young women being able to read and write. Um, um, but of course, because we do dance, because we do theater, sometimes as well, uh, sometimes um, the, the, uh, the kind of opposition that we're coming up against has to do with, you know, what value do these events actually have? And is it in line with this religious belief? 
faith mm. or this faith. So there are all sorts of, you know, really interesting angles and things that people say. Sometimes they have something against the sort of themes that we, we have. But I just shut all that out. That's like noise <laughs> because you focus on what is it is that you want to do. And um, the, the, the event, I think, speaks for itself. People like different things. And why have a festival um, where you can't engage different people on the different things that they might be interested in? And so this year, for instance, uh, last year rather, you'll notice that we had a concert. I've been wanting to have a concert for a long time for us to organize one. And we could never make it happen. It was an happen. amazing concert. Oh, oh yeah. it was super with Adonine Fetiti, Falano, Brimo. and Brimo. And I, I've never really organized a concert of that nature before. So it was about sitting down. Okay, how does one do this? I had to call Ade Bantu. Right, help me here. What do I do? And he gave me some pointers. And it was fantastic. But there are people who came to Ake Festival, maybe they were thinking, ah, should I go? I don't know if I can afford it. The minute they heard that Brian Mufalano or Adonio Nefertiti were going to be there, they said, man, that's, I'm going, mm. you know? And that's it. There's music, there's theater, there's poetry, there's film, there's, you know, there are books, there's something for everyone. And what's great about that also is that you can go there thinking, okay, I, I'm just going for the play. But because you're now there, yeah. you end up going to see other things mm -hmm. and you, you never know what kind of interest that's going to spark in an area that you thought you wouldn't have been interested in. And that's, I think that's something that we, we work on a lot at the office. Now you talked about your, your own novel. Um, I don't know if some people have forgotten that you are a novelist as well. <laughs> she has saying. I hope not. <laughs> and of course your novel is the wonderful Secret Lies of Abasegi's Wives. Thank which you. everybody loves. It is literally one of those. So and now you're saying it, it makes sense to me because it is literally one of those books that's very picturesque when people are reading it. And everyone's like laughing out loud whilst they're reading it as well. I want to know whether it's also a function of age for you because I listen to a lot of people sort of talk about literature, talk about writing, and there's this obsession with, you know, the perfect sentence or trying to write like certain people from, you know, who are renowned or from back in the day. But I almost feel like, you know, when you wrote that book, you were just writing and having a good time writing. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering whether it's a function of age for you not taking yourself too seriously as a person, S taking your work seriously, but not yourself. Um, the people who know me and who are close to me know that I generally don't take myself too seriously. And um, I have a problem sometimes with people who are too kind of tight assed. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I just want people to be relaxed chill. and chill. You know, when I was writing that book, I'd written three books of poems. I'd written, um, I think by then my children's book was out. I mean, I've written two plays before. All this stuff is like under my pot, <laughs> under my bed. But the... You know, it was something that I wanted to do. I tried three times, uh, twice rather, to write a novel. I tried Harlot. Um, there was, you know, ju my Juvenalia, um, which came out about three years before that, actually. Something called Fertility Nails. But I'd done all Why that. Why do we not know about all this stuff? Because I don't talk about them now. <laughs> What's the point of talking about things that, <laughs> that don't make it? <laughs> but um, the, so there's all, it was, Again, kind of building up to something. It was like, that was my practice. And then mm. I finally, I mean, I had that story in my head for years since I was 14. So, and I knew it was something I wanted to write. I actually wanted to write it as a play originally. Um, and then when I couldn't sell my second novel, then I thought, you know what? I just called my agent and I said, right, I've had enough. I want to try something else. And she said, oh, well, give me a synopsis. And I did. And she said, girl, you better write that book. And that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And I was working at the time. I was a teacher in the UK. I think I just, I, part of the time that I was, um, um, dur during, um, I, it was actually during my, um, I was getting a PGC, a postgraduate uh, post certificate in education in the UK as well at that time. So I was just writing every evening from 8 to 2 AM. It was something that I enjoyed doing immensely. I love the control that it gave me, um, just kind of being able to play God a little bit and being able to determine the fate of your characters. So that was really nice. Um, but I also liked the fact that I could bring my personality into my work. And that's something that I do um, in a lot of the stuff that I write anyway. And I, I like fun. I like humor, you know, um, but I also like, um, um, I like 
stories that that touch and stories that heal. Um, I I don't and I never underestimate the power of literature and how it can um, turn people's lives around. You are also as passionate about writing and your festival as much as you are about education and educating people about literature. I know you have a few more projects coming on as well. So tell yeah. me about some of them. Well, thank you very much. I am um, passionate um, about education, about culture, uh, and of course about literacy and literature. And I feel very lucky at this age. Um, I'm 43. And it's possible, the fact that it's possible for me at this age to be able to determine what I do, the projects that I take on, but also to be able to bring all my, the things that I'm passionate about together in this, you know, incredible uh, marriage or mel polygamous marriage because there are three, <laughs> three elements to it, is, is something that, that I feel, um, I feel really blessed about that. But I do, and um, we've just opened a publishing house called Weeder Books. Uh, we've got six amazing books lined up for this year. Odafe Atogon, Ayobami Adebayo, Hadiza El Rufai. We've got Tade Thompson. We're looking to publish a book by Nedio Korafo. And of course, we've got the anthology of, of graphic novels. And that's just a start. So there's that um, that we are, you know, that, that has just been kind of introduced and it was launched at the at the festival um, just as a way of of just making sure there are more books out there to be honest with you in organizing Ake festival every time we bring an author it gives me so much delight when i know that the, there's a uh, there's a nigerian edition of that book mm -hmm. and that there's a nigerian publisher who's going to bring the books to the bookstore for us to sell for them and you know nothing makes me happier than knowing okay we got 120 books of you know, 120 copies of a particular book and we've sold out. And the more of that we can introduce, the better. That's how to really grow the industry, you know? It's almost impossible now with the exchange rates to bring books um, from abroad to sell here. It, they're just way too expensive. And just having them available here, for me, Cassava, Kachifo, uh, Parasia and so many of the growing publishing houses. I mean, for me, these guys are real heroes and, it, and it's wonderful what they're doing. So we've got that, which we're introducing. But as you know, the Book Buzz Foundation, that's the foundation that I founded in 2012, is what actually the organization that organizes Ake Festival. So we've got a lovely um, new project, which is funded by the EU. Um, and it's called the Right to Write uh, project Nigeria okay. and what we're going to do is that we're going to help to develop and mentor 20 authors from northern Nigeria that's one aspect of it so we do a call for applications we look at the right samples of the work and we kind of pair each writer up with a mentor okay. which is most of them are Nigerian some are English some are from other parts of Africa and the great thing is that we're able to actually pay the authors so they can take time out of whatever it is that they're doing to focus on their books and to really hone the craft. We give them a starter pack with all the books and the material they need. Um, so that's one aspect of the project. At the end of it, I should add, um, the EU is printing 5,000 copies of each book, which will then be used and given to kids in 40 schools in five states in northern Nigeria. So that's Bauchi, Borno, Yobe State, Kaduna, and Katsina. So we're going to be working with teachers in 40 schools in each state. Because the idea is we want to bring back the idea of, of having class readers. So it's not just about textbooks. It's just about helping kids to actually enjoy reading, yeah. enjoy books, looking at beautiful pictures, engaging with different stories. So. Um, and we're also going to do teaching aids so that they can take an hour out of school to just work with the kids on these books. Every kid in a class will actually get a copy of those books, uh, of you know the book that's um, appropriate for, for that kid's age and class. Um, so I feel very lucky to be involved in that sort of thing. We're also going to uh, train three people from each state in um, how to work with the media. I know that a lot, a lot of the, the work you've been doing, you have, you've, the most successful fundraising has been foreign money. Yeah. And these are things that are benefiting us 
here in Nigeria. And mm -hmm. it's not just, it's both on a local and a community level mm -hmm. as well. Why is it so difficult to raise money for anything here? For the arts, for literature. So I always say if it's not pop music or fashion, exactly. nobody's interested. It's a question of uh, what people value. What people value. And I think that things are changing mm. um, because um, people are now seeing that authors actually can be successful um, and have great lives and are traveling and are jet setters and and which is which is important too and i feel that people are attracted to the glamorous mm. people want to be uh, associated with glamour i was going to ask you glamour. about that the, the glamour um, at all. yeah whereas a lot of the things that i do are not about glamour and are not for um any of those reasons that i think have to do with um, snazziness or you know just bright lights it's uh, I'm driven more by um, the the core you know the the things that move me are things that I feel very deeply um, they're not kind of surface or superficial you can be glamorous today and it's gone tomorrow and I think it's it breaks the heart that that um, a lot of Nigerian organizations or companies do not support um, the arts do not support literature and culture in the way that they should. But having said that, we're very lucky to have companies like Eti Salat. Last year, FCMB stepped up to the plate. You know, we have, um, um, oh God, look, everyone else I was going to mention is actually <laughs> abroad based. But of course, we get a lot of support from You also them. have Nigerian breweries, I think. Yeah, we yes. have Nigerian breweries. Yeah. We have... Um, Oh Lord, we do have, yeah. we do get support. But that so took I can't some, lie that to took you. some time, though. But it's kind of the, the the it's one of many things that they do. So sometimes we don't kind of get as much as they could give us. Yeah. But that's fine because I actually don't complain. So even when I come, I go to people and I say, "Can I have money?" and they say, "We don't have money." So they're like, "Okay, what can you give us?" Hmm. So then they have to start thinking as well. I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Is it by force? Yes, you have to give us something. So, yeah. uh, so at least we can be one of our sponsors. And people also can get really creative. So I'm really happy for people to give us products or services, if, even if they can't give us money. And, you know, but it, it's, it's, it's great to have um, the support of organizations like the EU because they're very consistent. And they seem to really get what it is that we're doing. And I would rather go with a company or with an organization that gets what we're doing mm -hmm. and puts, you know, gives us a little bit of money, but understands and values it. That's everything. Sometimes some companies will just throw money at you and then they're supposed to come and do a bit of promotion, a bit of, you know, come and do some branding. And they don't even bother to come because they don't care. They've just thrown money at you. The money is nice. But for me as an organizer, I really love it when the people connect with the projects that we, we engage with or, in, you know, the things that we introduce, the ideas. But then there are a lot of, a lot of people who, who say, when it comes to this funding conversation, they're saying, some people are saying, look, it's, a, it's purely a business decision. They don't feel like, um, they don't feel like they have the numbers, um, the sort of, so the arts events or the, mm. the arts doesn't have the numbers, say, fashion or, or as I said, pop music would have. Mm. So they're really all about... I just find that difficult to believe as well because, I mean, your festival boasts a couple of thousands of people. Yeah. So the numbers are there. Yeah. So, so what's, what's the excuse? Well, it's interesting. CSR is not CSR anymore. See, even CSR has now been, a, it's all about money. It's been so commercialized that the whole point of CSR is to be able to do things that engage the community that you know do things in areas sometimes where other people are not paying attention or areas that people are not paying attention to but knowing that you give a little here and it goes quite a long way or you it's also being able to support you know incredible beginnings when you see a project something that's going to grow you put a little bit there to support it it's CSR um, is not about uh, marketing but now it is in Nigeria. In fact, the marketing, how much sales it can uh, result in, has become what determines what companies support. Companies should be driven by, you know, the essence of CSR and what it really means, and, uh, and not just um, 
the marketing a lot of them have marketing departments and sales departments yeah. already now so <laughs> <laughs> do what it says on the table <laughs> well, yeah Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison, um, or The Blind Assassin. Oh, Margaret Atwood, Margaret yeah. Margaret Atwood, yeah. Um, I'm just going to be safe and say Toni Morrison. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, probably a pineapple. Why? Incredibly sweet and juicy, mm -hmm. but with um, an exterior that can be a little difficult to cut through, or mm. maybe a little spiky sometimes. Mm. Um... Passionate. Mm. Um, maybe a, a, a newscaster. Oh, okay. I don't know. Oh, one of my favorite songs ever in life is um, um, Chandelier, which okay. is really, yeah, by Sia. Yeah. Yeah, I that love so that odd. song. Yeah, why? I don't know. Yeah. So I, I, my one, my greatest regret is probably and it's kind of like a lifelong um self this exercise in self-flagellation that i do is that at different parts and moments in my life i haven't stopped to enjoy my successes or my accomplishments my achievements and that's something i want to go into my 50s doing a lot more of i think that that art can change the world and creativity because it, it's it's um you know there's something that barack obama said just recently about what books mean to him and how you can find truth in books in art when you're a creative person you always your work is always embedded with the truth and the truth is contagious um, as people consume those truths, um, it heals, it supports, it's, um, it helps them. It makes them healthier because they can, they're able to filter, they're able to take what they need and use it to improve the quality of their own lives be it that they're having similar issues to maybe a character in the book, mm -hmm. be it just a line that totally speaks to them. The, in fiction, as a, or, uh, as a novelist, I can tell you that fiction has been so therapeutic for me because a lot of the things I truly believe in my life, you will find in my book. But because um, I have very little in common with the characters in my book, it's uh, very hard for people to see. Uh, I want to make a movie of this book, maybe. Thank you so much, Hugs Hugs. Mwah. I really appreciate your being here. Lovely to you. And it was so to awesome talk to talking to you as well. It's always great to chat to you. You know, we have lots of our chats. I know. Ghana, everywhere. <laughs> ah, where we, we always, get together. We always have bonding moments. You know how it is. <laughs> Big thank you to Lola Shine for coming into the Culture Diary studio. Also, massive shout out, of course, to Soft Productions for giving us their beautiful studio. Don't forget, if you do like the show, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, give us a thumbs up, share the videos. All the information you need will be at the bottom of the screen. Until next time, remember, art is life.